Welcome to episode 112. This week, Dad serves Desert Point. We rescue a turtle and see some of the damage from the earthquake in Lombok. We left our anchorage this morning. We're on our way. Now it's quick in the tropics. <laughs> We've uh, left our anchorage and we're motoring around to Desert Point. I'm just hoping that when we get around this strait, uh, the current is still with us. Because we're doing about nine knots at the moment along the south side of uh, Lombok. So with no sails. <laughs> in the Lombok's with no sails, yeah. And Lombok Strait has the most current apparently uh, for the flow throughs here along all the islands so predominantly flows south 90% of the time even when the tide does turn so we're about to find out whether our nine knots is going to slow down or not hey. and as long as it doesn't start shaking while we're here we're a little bit concerned about that there was an earthquake oh there was an earthquake there's a few earthquakes here not long ago and not long ago by like weeks ago so Lee just went back to see how fast we were going or how we are going and check on the engine and things. And uh, we're going like 10 knots. We have no head sailor. We've just got a main, well, a reefed main. It's not doing anything. It's just to keep us stable. But the engine's running and we're going, <laughs> going 10 knots, which is the fastest that Catalpa goes. So, oh God, I hope when we turn this corner, we don't go into 10 knots with the currents. <laughs> it's not going to be fun. Let's just hope that it keeps running with us until we stop today, because that would be amazing. We'll see. We will soon see, because the corner's just up here. The tide is dropping, so we should be going with it a bit here. We've had the current with us. We're up ahead. I don't know if you can see all that, but there's some lot of movement in the water. It's swirling around. It's crazy. And Paradise seems to have slowed there in the current right now. So I've just got to get around this corner up here, but you know, it's still five nautical miles to get up there. We were going. 10, I think we dropped back to about 7, 6 and these guys must have dropped right back because we're catching them. Crazy, there's like big eddies everywhere. Whoa! So apparently we've timed it right. We didn't, we, no, we didn't time anything, we just actually fluked it but you would not want to be going against this current. It's just insane. It's very intense. Yeah, so I think, I think all in all, I sort of, I didn't really look at it, to be honest, but... Um, so we're now doing three, four knots. What did they say? Yeah, they just said, prepare to slow down. <laughs> Over there, we've been sitting on eight to 10 knots like us, and uh, they're down to two. Like us, we're down to 2.6. Yeah. Oh, that's a bit disheartening. We've been having a good run. <laughs> we thought we were going to get there in heaps of time. So, we're just coming past Desert Point. Oh, yeah, I can see someone right there. You can see some guys surfing, and there's like a plethora of calapa on the beach. Calapa tree. right there. You can so this is another one and instead of using tahini because I don't like tahini I use peanut butter a homemade peanut butter actually and it tastes much better just a desert point just having a quick look we got in and uh, sun's going down but we're gonna have a quick paddle and try and get one or two it's about four to five foot and guys are just getting one after another right. how good is that though a surf break that actually pulls you out yeah. 
We dropped off the boys about half an hour before dark. It was too much current and too deep to drop the anchors. Uh, just going to leave them running. So we drove around waiting while they had to surf. The current was so strong, it started taking us out to the channel and it was really hard to see as it was getting dark. There was no sign of the boys and we were losing light. Luckily, they started paddling over and we found them. Wasn't a relaxing way to end the day for some of us. Here at Lombok, every morning, a mass of fishing boats would head back into the land. After fishing all night, it was beautiful watching them all come in sailing. These fishermen use nets, and these are all the fish that they catch. It's incredible to think that all of these boats catch a lot of fish in their nets every single day. After with our adventure with the tenders at Desert's Point, we thought it would be a better idea to leave the tenders at a village close by and get some transport around to the surf break. It was a very small fishing village with not many bikes or cars, but we managed to find a guy to take us around. It wasn't very far, but it was a super rough and bumpy road. We arrived after a bumpy ride in. Ordered some food and met some of the friendly locals. This is the friendliest goat ever, and also pretty cheeky. After a feed and watching the waves, the boys headed out. It was time to pile back in the truck and head back around. Back at the village, we bought some veggies and some homemade goodies and a turtle. Wait, and a turtle, yep, a turtle. That turtle's still there, eh? That turtle's still there. Hello, darling. Hello. Oh, he's on a rope. Oh. Yeah, it's okay, we're gonna help you. He's on a rope. It's around his leg. We thought he or she was caught on a rope, but she wasn't there by accident. It was tied up. It's okay, man. Oh, it's like dinner. Oh, shit. What's going on there, Sarah? Okay, so we just paid there. We, we just came back and the turtle had been there since we arrived. And we thought he was caught around a rope, but turns out he was tied up. These guys were going to eat him. Um, we asked if we could buy him so that we could set him free, and they have agreed. So we just paid 100000 to free the turtle. <laughs> Fella 
us back out into the deep blue. What makes the world go round is love, love, love. love. The gravity of it's humanity really ain't always enough. 100,000 and uh, one turtle at a time. So that's roughly 10 Australian dollars to free a turtle. Well, well and truly worth it, hey guys? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 10 bucks ever. <laughs> And it looks like as though Lombok is now protecting these guys too. Translated, this sign says, Let's save turtles by not trading and consuming sea turtles and turtle eggs. Violations of this provision are punishable by a maximum of five years of imprisonment and most fines 100 million rupiah, which is about $10,000. So maybe we save this guy from prison or a fine. So no like worries, mate. New Desert Point. We're just heading around towards the Marina Del Rey and Lombok. Ex visas expire next week and we have to go to the immigration to get extension. And uh... We anchored out the front of the marina, met the owner and headed ashore to use some of their Wi-Fi. What's it doing there, Mama? Uh, crazy. Getting, uh, we've got really good Wi-Fi, so... Just uploaded episode 100 really quickly and now I'm just sending out um, heap of thank you videos for our patrons. Oh. I've not had internet oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I don't know, maybe like five or six days, like good internet. So, yeah, busy, busy. So we're on our way to immigration today to extend our visas. We're just getting a water taxi across to the mainland from the marina. These are the best roads we'd seen since arriving in Indonesia and the drive from the marina to the main town Matram was about 90 minutes. We arrived at immigration on Friday in the morning and the office was having a strike and was not processing anyone's paperwork so no extension today. We utilised our driver and went to the supermarket for some provisions. Just coming back from Matram, Matram and we didn't get to do our passports today because the uh, immigration was closed. So we're going to go back on Monday. Our visas expire on Tuesday so we're kind of fine but at least we went. Yeah, paid a fortune to get there but that's okay. <laughs> we got uh, a lot of shopping done so provisioned up. After realising we would have to do another expensive drive into town from here on Monday for our visas, we decided instead we would sail to a closer anchorage to Matram, so it was cheaper and easier. We had our last dinner with Ollie and Alana before we left, as they were staying and meeting some friends. Break the line. Ooh. <laughs> Just playing some Jenga. And we nailed the last game, we got the tire you so high. You do get me. And I pulled the camera out and it fell down. <laughs> Not saying any names. <laughs> yeah, it was like all the way up here. It was, it was massive. We just pulled anchor from Gilligate and we're heading up to um, somewhere closer to an immigration. Simigat. Do you know where it's called? Somewhere closer to town so we don't have to pay a massive amount of money to get a car up an hour and a half away like we did the other day so we didn't stay at the marina but we went over and used their wi-fi and um yeah it's a nice little spot but it's expensive so gotta go and extend our visa <laughs> A few hours sail and we arrived at Singigi Beach, which was only a 20 minute taxi ride to Matram. So today we're at Lombok in Singigi Beach and uh, we got our visas done, which was awesome. So we went this morning and then we went back the, uh, in the afternoon and picked our visas up and they're all done. So it was really easy. We didn't have to pay anyone any extra. 
and it was awesome. So if you come to Lombok and you need to do an extension, it's very easy and you don't need a local sponsor that some people will tell you that you do, but you don't. So yeah, we had a pretty good day. We went to the shopping center, the shopping mall. We had four hours to kill waiting for our visa. <laughs> We're just sitting back, relaxing, having a, jar, a drink. We had a nice couple of days here. It's been the first place that has reminded us of Bali. Everywhere else in Indonesia has been really different. It was really quiet because of the earthquakes and not many tourists around. There's quite a bit of damage, not as much as up north apparently, but the people here were in good spirits and happy to have people come to visit. So we're just walking down the street from Pentai Singigi and um, I didn't think we'd seen much damage from the earthquake. I thought they were pretty lucky here, but walking along you do notice um, a few things. And it's Off to the markets and these were by far the smelliest and the, the most flies and bugs we had ever seen. What do you reckon, buddy? Smell better? It's the smelliest markets we've been to. You know why though? It's because there's horse and carriage everywhere. So there's like horse poo out front. I reckon, I reckon if you farted, nobody would smell it. So Mama's in here. She's flat out making the next movie. Uh, that's how it gets done on Katalpa, but anyway. Coming back out into here, Taz is like sneaking a corn chip in there. But Bella's actually, she's made up a little bit of, what do you got going on there, Bella? It's homemade. What do you got in there? Salsa. So there's about five tomatoes, some coriander. With salt and pepper? Salt and pepper, jalapenos, onion, onion garlic. and garlic. Whipping up a storm here, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that thing. You put the cheese on. Salsa. That was amazing. She's just so good. That stuff, coriander. So nice that I was editing and I came out and food was ready. So we just left Singigi Beach and we're heading to the Gillies. I think Gilly Tea. This was a nice little way at us Anchorage. It wasn't too bad. It was a little bit rolly, but. It's fine, it's a great place to do your visa, so quick and easy. All the locals are really lovely and they're still real happy even though half of them can't even sleep in their houses anymore. They're all a little bit too, still scared, there's still earthquakes happening every day. So while we were in um, Singigi, we were talking to some locals. Um, every morning or every day we went in there, they said, oh yeah, we had an earthquake last night or early in the morning. Um, not big ones, but little ones. We didn't feel anything on the boat, but they're all really scared to sleep in the houses. So they're all, most of them, if they've got a concrete house, are, um, if they've got a concrete house, they're sleeping in tents. So they're all in pretty good spirits and they, they're trusting that the tourists will come back soon enough. They're just hoping that uh, all these tremors or all these earthquakes aren't gonna bring something massive on. It's a, it's a beautiful island with beautiful people. We've enjoyed our time here. So on to the gillies and off to do some diving. So that was episode 112. Hope you enjoyed. Please give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. If you want to see where we are in real time, you can go follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Sailing Catalpa. Thanks for watching. Bye. We just want to say a massive thank you to all our patrons because without you guys, these videos wouldn't be possible. All comes all thanks to you all.
things to your 